it's a typical grocery store. Thanks, guys. Peppers. What are we yes. having today? Sandwich select. Ham cheese or ham and cheese? They had turkey? I don't know. I like cheese and ham over the ham and cheese. Good. They got good wraps. Oh, they have wraps there. Yeah. And whatever that is. Tuna salad. Tuna salad. And coleslaw? No. Uh, Crab salad. Crab salad. That doesn't sound like something safe that we should I don't know. Eat. They they didn't spell it with a K, but I still don't think it's real. <laughs> Alright. Uh I don't know. Maybe I'll eat fruit for for lunch. I was hoping for roast beef. Roast beef is yeah. my favorite one. Maybe. Wait. This is fruit and lettuce all together. Tropical salad they call it. Interesting. Regular fruit. I wish they just had like pineapple, you know, like just regular chopped pineapple instead of having it mixed up with all this other stuff I don't normally eat. Like grapes, grapes are grapes are gross. Fine. Nah. Um, okay, let me see. Let me think. Cantaloupe or a mix? Let's go with a mix. And I'll, yeah. I'll hook Ben up with some grapes. Every, look at this. Nice, huh? Okay. Let's, uh, what do we get? Chips? Yeah, let's get chips too, you know? We want to be healthy, so. <laughs> oh, the cheese balls. Uh, cheese balls are, these are the best, by the way. For first snack of the Abaco trips. All right, let me see. Um, yes, I had the cheddar cheese ones. They're pretty good. Maybe I'll try a different one. This is Brian's preferred flavor. I hope. I wish they sold the salt and vinegar in this size. That would be. That would be nice. Just get the full size. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, I'll eat some. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's do that. Let's do it. Oh, All right, you got everything. All right, now let's go. What do we get? I think that's it. Oh, I have a Gatorade at the house. I forgot. Uh, well, you can get another one. Well, we're actually here for another couple days, so maybe we should get Gatorade. Is it powder drinks? Power drinks? Yeah, let's go right here. Now, nah, let's just get one. Zero sugar. Perfect. Zero sugar, zero flavor. See, that's, that's not right. It's pretty good. You just don't have all that. I'm all for no sugar. I just can't do sugar. the artificial sweetener. Exactly. You know, a little bit of sugar is fine. It's all about the uh, full sugar, huh? Yeah, yeah. A little Real bit of sugar. Yeah. or nothing. Yeah. Moderation, right? <laughs> exactly. Moderation. Malta? Red, Red Bull? Bull? Well, that's all you need, right, in the grocery store? True. True. Stop two of every morning. Frank is the breakfast. gas station slash breakfast spot. Because, you know, buying food at the gas station is awesome. Here in Abaco. That's a good thing. All the food is good here, right? Yeah, buddy. Right, well, what do we got over here? Bacon and eggs, looks like. And then number threes. And I don't know what that is. What do you want? Hot chicken patty. You want to try one? Yeah. Uh, these chicken patties are already sold out. Some kind of pasta. 
I should say. Hold on. That's a big hit in the morning, guys. Ooh, what's that? Those are uh, turkey, cheese, egg and cheese croissants, or bacon, egg and cheese. What's the best thing? I can't do day to day. The patties, the patties are faster than the other car kind of stuff. Those are big back to shop. Right next. EO Depp? No. Oh, it's called Haitian spaghetti. Right there, with boiled egg. Chocolate chip and it ends up being blueberry. That's always disappointing. Oh. Dodger. Candy Dodger. Oh. Never had those. Uh, Raisin, same as the blueberry. Hate it when they trick me. Uh, let's see what else they sell here. An assorted variety of cigarettes, <laughs> knives. Yeah, these knives. Whoa. Badass. Yeah. Grand Reaper. Nice. Yeah. Okay, that is better. Especially toward the end of a keg. So now we drop here. Come here and make a close up here. This is the screen, but if you notice, the screen sits higher because of this from the sorb. But we need the sorb to get to the screen. So, how do you do that? You give it a little shake. <laughs> you can see how the sorb starts going up all the way to the screen. And we're ready. Now if you pull by the spring, it comes off. I did that for demonstration purposes. <laughs> no, really. Keep doing that. Yesterday too, <laughs> even though we weren't recording. Um, You're just making sure everything's working. Right, right, right. It's always a side that it's better. I think it's... Yeah. Alright, so... I'm following a checklist, as we always do. Now we're on page two out of four. Install canister screen to ensure, okay, so I just did that. Install canister spring and cap. That's what I just did. That's not part of it. Uh, clean canister, surface, ceiling surface. I just did that. Install canister on head. Okay. So now I'm gonna screw the head into it. Carefully. Carefully. Of course, you 
course, we're going step by step with our checklist as we go. That's right. Okay, I think that's tight. This is working. Let me do a last push right here. Yeah, I think that's good. Just make sure it's even all the way around. Yeah. There's no gaps or anything. It is even all the way around. Check. And I'm going to install the, uh, what's this called? The funnel? The vacuum brake vacuum tunnel? Brake tube. tube. Okay. Yeah. It's just a, you can see an O-ring here at the bottom. That's so the tube stays straight. Okay. That's the OPV. All right. Install canister on head. Check. Ensure canister vacuum brake tube is installed properly. That's what we just did. Ensure sidekick body and counter lung are clean. All right, here we go. So I'm looking inside. You can look inside here. Just looking inside. It all looks clean. And whatever you see that is white right here on the edge, it's actually lubricant to make sure that it goes in smooth. Okay, this all looks good. Brian has some stories of, what is it, frogs and all kinds of stuff jumping yeah. inside these things. There's pretty much all kinds of wildlife. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna install it. Now look, there's a notch. Brian put in this thing. Did, did you put this notch or the, did it come from? Okay, so there's a notch. Come here, get the camera close here. It's like a tiny little notch right there, all right? And we're gonna line that up with an equally tiny notch, which is right here, okay? So we're gonna pick this up. And you see the two notches there. They are kind of together. That's it. So it's been lower. And do we add the screws yet or is that later? Once it's lined up, go ahead and put the screws in. Okay, here. we're gonna put the screws in. We're gonna take the Phillips screwdriver and we're gonna do four screws. Not super tight because this is Delarin. We don't wanna mess this up. Okay. Next. Boom. Get this out of the way. Okay, that's that. All right, next step. Dive two in the wonderful Abaco cave systems. Exactly. So this dive, uh, we wanted to go to the Great Pool. This is called the Great Pool. Is this majestic pool of crystal that is gray because it looks a little ashy. You remember the Great Pool? Oh yeah, the Great Pool is awesome. But yeah. what isn't awesome? Yeah, but in order to get to the Great Pool, we have to go to the mat room and also go through the sanity room. So there's some, you know, yeah. cave features that we're gonna go through on this one. I think it's more like the insanity room, right? Yeah, the insanity room. That's right. And um, one of the things that you'll notice in this dive is that a lot of the sections that we went through are actually pretty tight in terms of, at least in comparison with the other dives. The tightest is the glass factory, which is coming on video number three. So stay tuned for that. But um, this one we go through the Badlands, which is cool. It and... Yeah, just imagine having to, you know, if this was a dry cave, there's, there's yeah. no way to get over that. You'll I mean, break all your bones. All of that rock is sharp. Yeah. Um, but you were recording on this one, on like dive number one, where I was recording you do the dive. So in this one, you'll see me and Brian uh, in front of you. So you were the cameraman on this one. So we kind of took turns, right? So yeah. for like Glass Factory, which is dive number three, I was the cameraman. And then the last dive, you were cameraman. Mm -hmm. So we did four dives and we took turns. 
So on this one, you get to see me, obviously not as good as Ben from the last dive, but. Whatever, you look fine. Stop. What, is, that, is that a new rebreather I see? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was diving the uh, Kiss Sidekick, which is that rebreather you see on the right. Ben was on the Sidewinder, of course. So I've always wanted to learn, not learn, but I wanted to dive the Sidekick because the people that own a Kiss Sidekick love it. Like they're absolutely 100% in love with their gig, with, with their with their CCRs, the rebreather. So I was always like, I want to try it. I want to try the Sidekick. Um, and out of all the Sidekick divers out there, Brian Keiko is probably the most prolific, most recognized, you know, face of the Sidekick. So I talked to Brian. I said, Is there any way? that I can just dive the sidekick and we do a crossover. So I actually took a class with him um, this week and I got certified to dive the sidekick and that's why I'm diving it on these videos. Look at all those little, yeah, little, little structures in there. Oh, so cool. Yeah, stalactites. By the way, that hose behind my neck hurt you see how i'm trying oh, yeah. to fix it like yikes it's the hose that connects to the sidekick so on the sidewinder there's also a hose that goes behind my neck but i fed it through the like the straps the mm -hmm. shoulder straps so it's it's really really behind my it doesn't rub against mm -hmm. my neck but this one was rubbing against my neck the whole time this is by the way a, a little subset of two plus hours this dive yeah. was a long one and here there's a uh, formation here on the left, so we have mm -hmm. to turn to go through so that we don't knock that yeah. beautiful structure over. Yeah, that, that um, stalagmite is actually, it looks like a propeller from a plane. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, thin, like see a blade, as you can see. It quite touch the ceiling there. Mm -hmm. And people think that it formed that way instead of being like a regular stalagmite that are mainly rounded, because of wind. So wind going through that little hole where he formed, kind of shaped it to be like that, like a blade. Look, I was trying to do you on, on that one with the stagger fins, oh, one yeah. on top of the other. Not as good. <laughs> trying to keep it close. Yeah, in a lot of these areas, like when you go back and look at the video, it's like, oh, I was miles away from something. Yeah. But when feeling. you're diving, you're you're so paranoid about, <laughs> you know, I'm always next to something. So, what you know, we're, we're so focused on doing, you know, small kicks all the time. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you'll see me in parts of this video kicking with just one foot because the other foot, I felt like it was too close to something. So if I'm close to something, I'm only going to kick with one foot. I mean, we're not rushing. This is not a competition, right? We're not yeah. going super fast. So yeah, we're, we're just here to dive the cave. No, no need to rush through everything. Cause then you'll miss something. Right. And in some parts you notice my knees are pretty low. Brian told us, you know, there are sections where I want your fins never to go above your head. So the only way to do that is to lower your knees and kick behind your butt, kind of. And, and so the uh, formation they just signaled yeah. in there, see how thin it's calm. on the left there, it's so thin, then has a little tiny piece coming out. It looks out like, a, like a finger pointing to the sky, yeah. like a you know index finger. So, so we'll signal certain formations like that just so that we're aware of, hey, watch, especially watch out for this yeah. one. And I think you swim sideways on this one, just so it's always in front of your face. Like you're yeah. like, uh, okay. That one is behind. But if you see the ceiling like right above me, see how it's covered with tiny stalactites? So as we swim through this cave, it's literally like swimming through a, like a minefield. There's stuff in the ceiling, there's stuff in the bottom, there's stuff on the sides you have to be in control like the whole mm -hmm. time. Even if something bad happened right here, like if my rebreather failed, I can't just go crazy and destroy the whole cave. Here's another one where we're, we have to go sideways and like pull ourselves around 
See how Gus has to keep his fins over on the right side there? Because see behind him, if he were just to swing out too wide, he'd knock all those formations over. Yeah. By the way, I hope you all enjoy like a little visit to the grocery store and the gas station. We kind of debated to put that in, but that's how we started every day. So every day this week, we started with a trip to the grocery store and a trip to the gas station for breakfast. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys kind of what that looked like. So if you like that stuff, the stuff that has nothing to do with diving, mm -hmm. let us know in the comments below. You want more of that off the cuff, just turn the camera on and see what we're doing. Let us know and we'll do it, you know, more in the future. So here's another one where Brian signaled, watch out for this formation on the right. Yeah. And this room's massive. Like, yeah. Look, it just goes. <laughs> I know. I love it because now I'm watching the video with you and I'm like, what's there? What's there? Why don't yeah. we just lay well, down? There's another tunnel. Look, I'm about to, yeah. about to turn. There's another tunnel over here. Yeah, see? Where, where does that tunnel go? There's this cool feature right there. Yeah, crystal with Sahara Desert on it. Look at that see, tunnel. Look, that, there's a hole down there. Come on. Brian, take us there. All right, I think this was probably the smallest restriction of the whole dive, yep. this tiny one. I like that you swim by it like no big deal. Like, <laughs> Oh, it's very stressful. Cause when I'm having the video, I've got a video light in one hand, the camera in the other. So I'm completely hands free. <laughs> trying to navigate all this. Yeah. <laughs> Very stressful. All right, sideways on this one. By the way, this rebreather, the sidekick, is much easier to swim sideways mm -hmm. than the sidewinder. Yeah. Yeah, I had steel tanks on, so it's kind of hard to maintain that sideways position. Yeah. He wants to throw you back to trim. Yeah. Luckily, I had lots of video lights with me, so I could use them as ballast to help, <laughs> help turn me. Counterbalance the, yeah, the tanks. Watch the column. Made it. Did you go sideways on this one? Yeah. Okay. The camera doesn't go sideways because i, I mean sideways. to be honest to be honest there were a couple of restrictions i don't know if you felt this way but there were a couple of restrictions where brian would go sideways and i was able to just swim straight yeah. through i was like yeah. i don't i don't oh yeah and see so. there's all sorts of little formations like you, you on, find a little pocket on the cracks and, yeah below those things yeah where, where some little something collapsed thousands of years ago and then yeah. the formations formed. But look at that, how look, big it is. I see another tunnel, Gus. I see, look at that. <laughs> Dang. We should probably discover a room and like, you know, uh, sell the rights to name it, <laughs> you know, to a company or something. Sponsorship. Yeah, look, so I, here I'm kicking with one foot because my, my left leg is too close to like stalactites and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just enable the right thrust. Yeah. <laughs> and like right I said before, only. like on the video, you know, like you can see that Gus was through that restriction, but when you actually swim through it, you're never sh quite sure. So you're <laughs> extra careful, right. you know, like. Look at that. Oh bro. yeah, yeah. And then, How I mean, many rocks can you shine lights through? So, all the rocks that you see that look like that are crystal. Yeah. So most of the stuff that you see is crystal. Like all that on the right, The crystal. walls, everything. By the way, you get this similar effect on caves or mines that you go to that are salt mines. Like I remember mm -hmm. I went to this salt mine, like the deepest salt mine in the world, I think it is in Poland, near, near Krakow in Poland. And you would put a flashlight on the floor or the walls and it would look the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I see more tunnel. Look at this. I mean, come on. We should definitely go explore there. But every time we ask Brian, like Brian was that way. He's like, ah, there's nothing. Ah, there's nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't think, don't even think about it. Like, well, I'm starting yeah. to believe there's something. Uh, look at well, this. Uh, some, some of the passages, I mean, Brian has been here for years. Yeah. And I mean, he has explored a lot of them, so. Yeah. So here we're entering the sanity room. There's a lot of formations. You mean the insanity room. Yeah. I mean, look, look at that. 
Come on. Look, this whole thing's like supported by like, nothing. <laughs> yeah, the insanity room is awesome. And some of these bigger blocks you can see, they used to be attached to the ceiling. And as the look, floor look. dropped, I'm pointing to a tunnel and say, look at that yeah. tunnel over there. <laughs> so some of these formations you can see where they've kind of broken apart. And then at the bottom, you'll see more features growing on top, on top of it. Of where it was, you know, 100,000 years ago, it cracked. Yeah. And then more formations formed. I mean, it's, it's just mind boggling. Yeah. Like, like, look at that. Like the column over there on the right. Broken. You can yeah. see it detached from the ceiling. Mm hmm but now more formations of form. Yeah, oh, this, this is, is a little chessboard. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get telling it. you like, dude, turn that light off. <laughs> turn yeah, it Gus off. didn't like the video light. No. But so on this- It'll be some payback. It was kind of hard to film because we're right at the halocline. Mm -hmm. So so too much, it gets all swirly, so. Look how big that room is. But then I get my payback. Watch this. Oh, you don't like that? Get some. <laughs> <laughs> now you're blind. Yeah. All right, and then we continue to the gray pool, which is the turning point. That's where we turn around. Uh, big feature of the cave. Last year, uh, we actually kept going after the gray pool, mm -hmm. but Brian is not taking people back. It gets really, really, really small. As you can see, it just keeps getting mm -hmm. smaller and smaller and smaller. Crystal everywhere. Yeah. Like, look at look at all those little formations. Awesome. And that's all crystal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's all translucent. By the way, this silt right here has been like that for who knows how many thousands of years or whatever. It yeah. looks like snow on the on the ground. Yeah. It's like white silt. I'm like, no kicking, just pulling. That's the level that we are at this point. And I think in some of these, you turn the camera off because you need it to pull. Like you can't yeah. just film and pull. Yeah, like I said before, like I've got lights in one hand, camera in the other. Right. And I'm trying to do that and run a rebreather and you know, everything else, right? So yeah. a few times I had to stop the video like, like there because you know, I had to get in and you know, manipulate buoyancy, something. Yeah. I actually dared to pull and film on video number three. So if you watch the Glass Factory video coming up, you'll see me go through the chandelier basically through inside of the Glass Factory and I am pulling myself and recording at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the video is shaky to say the least, <laughs> but, but I left the camera on, you know, anyway. So this is what I'm telling you, like pile in here. Yeah. So this is where, you know, having a camera without a, a monitor that you can see what you're filming can be challenging because we don't really capture a whole lot of the gray pool, just like half the, the top yeah. half. But you see that on the bottom, it's just crystals and they're all gray and they're all amazing. But we didn't capture the whole thing. But you see that tunnel that goes, you know, straight? We went, we went through that tunnel last year. It's just, unfortunately, he's not taking people there. This little like, warm look at, oh, look at that thing. How did that grow on the side of the wall up? Yeah. It's amazing. And it's like, oh, there's a tunnel. What's in there? Let's <laughs> just push through. Some things it's like you want to go, but you, you would destroy the cave yeah, trying yeah. to get there. You have to break whatever is on the way to get there. And these are so fragile on the left. Look, I have yeah. it staggered, you know, like one fin yeah. on top of the other. More cave bacon over there on the More right. More cave bacon on the right, yeah. Yeah, it gets really, really tight. Yeah. There's more of those little worm, worm things if you see them over on yeah. some of the columns just coming out. I think those are called helictites. So yeah, there's, the helictites. Yeah. So there's stalactites, stalagmites, and the helictites. Helictites do whatever they want. Yeah, they just, they have no, the five physics, they don't care. 
Look at this minefield we're swimming through. It's crazy. Like, could we go there? Look at that tunnel. But it'll probably put us back where we are anyway. Now, some of them are broken. You can see they're like leaning against the mm -hmm. side or whatever. They've been like that broken for a long time. And you actually did a really good job filming one of the big columns that was broken with stuff growing out on it. So it broke, like you said, like 100,000 years ago mm -hmm. or whatever. And then for tens of thousands of years, new stalagmites grew on top of it. It's amazing. Yeah. It's unreal. And here I am like, oh, look, it's crystal. Yeah. <laughs> you just can't resist the urge, you know, like you see a your huge light chunk of rift. You know, it's, every time it's magical, right? I mean, yeah. it never gets old. See, look, I think you started to do it there yeah. a little bit. And <laughs> Big room. Yeah, every time you went into a big room, you were like relief a little bit. You're like, okay, I don't have to be as careful. You know, I have, I have some room for errors, but some of these you don't have room. Like look at the ceiling on this one. It's full of these super tiny stalactites. Very small kicks. So I think we're back in the uh, insanity room. We're on our way out. We turn around at the great pool. And I think this is where you film that column that fell off. Let's see if yeah. we can get a shot of that. So see, there it is. Yeah, there it is. So this column fell however long ago and see there's more formations growing out yeah the top <laughs> what what do you say it's like that's cool oh that's cool okay <laughs> i'm like do you see that back there oh the tunnel i was probably pointing to the tunnel the, there are some cool parts too. Like I think I think it was a glass factory where like chunks of a column would fall and then get covering crystal. So see, this is the Sahara yeah. uh, sand. Sahara sand. Sahara the, sand. Yeah, the, from Brian desert, would disturb the, yeah. with his hand. I like how you went through it. Mm. Yeah. Right here, I'm looking for leads. I'm like, okay, yeah. where are we going? <laughs> Where's the, well, I where told you, like, once you get that mindset, you can't cut it off. Like, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, you see things you never noticed before. So I like on this one, you started filming like the the fact that there's details on yeah. like on 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 these little um, shelves or yeah. whatever you you call them, and then you capture something interesting, which is the fact that these caves were, you know, covered in fossils. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fossils and you're about to see them embedded on the rock. See? Yep, see all the shells of conch? Yeah, conch shells embedded into the rock. Those are ancient mm -hmm. conch shells. And this is everywhere. That's not just one area. That's just the area that I took the time to film a little less. Yeah. Oh. This is really cool. Every time Brian picks up like a little tiny rock from the Sahara, you know, yeah. and, and does that, he makes this super, super cool effect. Look at that thing. So you, give me your hand. <laughs> oh yeah, I was, I was blessed. Yeah. <laughs> you have been accepted into the cave. <laughs> Smiley face on the hand. To wrap up, dive number two. What is? Day two is a wrap. What do you think? No. Well, day two is a wrap. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I think it was awesome. Awesome, right? Yeah. So are we night diving tonight, Brian? That's. No? Just say no to night dives. No. 
Is it Why is it too dark? dark? Is it too yeah, dark? It's way too dark. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. we did a uh, sanity room today. Mat room. Sanity room. Gray pool. Yeah, gray pool. Yeah, gray pool's pretty. Gray pool's pretty cool. Yes. Pretty awesome. Uh, still a couple more days to go. Looking forward to it. We still have to do the Fangorn Glass Factory. There's so many things to do. Yeah. And it was a blast. So stay tuned. If you missed, by the way, the video from day one, I'm going to leave it right here around Ben's face. Right. I'll cover here your face. Me. Yeah. Somewhere. That, that's, yeah. That, that was pretty yeah. good. See you on the next one. Yeah. See you guys.